I used to be a big fan of Joe Rogan. Sure. I still watch a lot of his. Uh, I still watch a lot of his videos, but uh, I wanted to talk to you specifically about being on Joe Rogan, sure. uh, the Joe Rogan experience, and like what you got out of that. Because you know the number one issue, one of the one of the unchangeable uh, issues that Joe Rogan won't budge on is other than like you know legalization of marijuana or whatever is uh, trans athletes, and yeah. I feel like it's really just. I think it has had a lasting impact on the way that people cover the oh, story. Yeah. It's a very, it's like a super uh, adequate, super powerful way to traffic transphobic uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. Not that people needed that anyway, because like, you know, you could just be as transphobic as you want and people will still give you like hundreds of millions of dollars. Shouts out mm -hmm. to Dave Chappelle. Um, so I wanted to, I wanted to get feedback on your experience there. Uh, you know, having a conversation with Joe Rogan, uh, specifically around the trans stuff. And and the backlash that you received as a consequence of that, and then we'll yeah. go into Bill Maher's uh, new brave, <laughs> bold, uh, yeah. you know, thought provoking uh, transphobic bit. Look, I mean, this was like three years ago. Um, he sprung that topic of conversation on me. It was not something that like I think I should be the representative of to talk about because I was there. I was like, all right, I mean, I'll I'll go to bat for what I think is right here as best I can. But, you know, when the dude is, like, locked and loaded with, like, you know, Jamie pull that up shit of whatever pseudoscience he wants to bring up. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's it wasn't the best position to be in. Um, and, you know, honestly, in retrospect, like, you ever seen the clip of Bill, Bill Burr on Rogan where Bill Burr goes, you know, Rogan is like... Uh, talking about masks? Talking about masks and yeah. vaccines. And like, why like, do you what the fuck can... are you doing, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the better move. In retrospect, I should have done that. But I was also, like... I didn't know we'd be talking about this. You know yeah. what I mean? When, so, I, when I do that, people get mad at me sometimes. Like, oh, there's a lot of, like, debate lords that are on the internet that are, like, sock them or, like, liberals. And they yeah. get, like, really upset whenever I have that conversation <laughs> exactly on those terms where I'm like, why do you fucking care about this? Like, can mm -hmm. you tell me who the second place, uh, you know, cis uh, loser was that lost to the trans person in this, like, random fucking regional swim meet? Like, yeah. no, you can't because you don't give a fuck about it. You're just saying it because a trans person happened to win this one time. Yeah. And they will probably get subsequently owned over and over again throughout their career, and you're never going to think about that ever again. Yeah. We're not going to watch this whole thing. I'm just, uh, oh, this, yeah. this is just B roll in the background. Um, and people get mad at me, but like, that's the normal position, I yeah. think. The, the normal position is just like, you don't care about this. You're only acting like you care about this and making it seem like you care about the integrity of the sport somehow being compromised by trans people, like the three trans people that are like uh, participating in it. And. And that's the unfortunate reality is the that like this is who, it dominates discourse. The people who who uh, like create this issue have never been to a women's sporting event in their life. You know, like they, they don't give a shit about it. And so like they have generated like a false issue, you know. Yeah. Now, now, look, when you're talking about whatever the the swimmer is at Harvard. Right. Um, I was, am I right? Uh, whatever. Like, and you're talking about like literally the people who are on the same team and that individual competition, like that's for the people in that community to figure out. It's fucking children's sports, you know, like we can surely find an accommodation here that is going to like allow everyone to participate in sports and do whatever the fuck else you wanted to do. Um, it's the inflation of it into a culture war issue that is ludicrous. Um, and yeah. But uh, what was the feedback? Like, you, you got a lot of backlash, right? Like, I mean, yeah. you... Yeah, people, no. people are, like, really... They get really fucking agitated... Oh, yeah. ...about this issue. Like, they make this out to be the most important, most significant thing. Is yeah, to, like, no, his, dunk fan, on. His, his fans came after me for a couple months after this. Um, yeah. It was, uh, you know, again, a conversation that I did not go in intending to have. Um, but, and it was just, like... Beta cuck, beta cuck, just like you yeah, know, the very basic stuff. No one's actually like advancing an argument of any kind. No one actually cares about the issue at all, um, you know. And and I'll point out, like, I say to him multiple times, "Hey, you should talk to like an expert about this. <laughs> you know, you should talk to like somebody who knows what they're talking about." Like, I'm not sure why we're having this conversation, but it's because you know. He felt like using me as a punching bag in that moment, you know? Um, the only experts he'll talk to about this are going to be experts that are not an actual expert in the field uh, and usually, like, random fucking evolutionary psychologists or whatever yeah. uh, who got fired for saying the N-word over and over again or some shit <laughs> from some, like, random liberal arts college that now have, like, a podcast uh, that 
Here, almost exclusively relies on being on Joe Rogan to stay afloat. Here's the most disappointing thing to me about this interview was was I was excited to do this interview because at the time Joe was not so directly associated with like the far right. Like he hadn't totally made that turn yet. He was saying shit like this, but I was like, okay, the guy's a comic, I'm a comic. We should be able to like, you know, do some gal have some galaxy brain fun together, you know? Mm -hmm. So he starts talking about this shit. And I try to get him to like look at it with a bigger picture and say, like, hey man, like sports are fucking social constructions. We made them up. And so we invented sport. Yes, there are differences between male and female bi biological, you know, born, whatever, assigned at birth male, assigned at birth uh, female bodies. Um, we designed sports such that the most popular ones are like designed for a male body. What if we didn't do that? Right. What if like, OK, like women's gymnastics, like men can't do that shit. Right. Because there's et cetera. What if we invented fucking sports that we did not have a problem with this with? Right. Because sports is just a fun thing to do. Sports is something that everyone should be able to participate in. So what if we invented some fucking less gendered sports? He was not willing to entertain that conversation. He was like, I was like, this is is this not interesting? And um, he, he wouldn't go there with me. So that that's my biggest bummer about it was like. Um, he was not really into the idea of having like an honest, he, he turned it immediately into a boxing match and I wanted to have a conversation. So all the backlash was like, Oh, Rogan owned you. He, you, he won a debate against you. I was like, I thought I was having a conversation. Like yeah. I, I thought I went on to just like talk about my show and like oh, he... spitball shit because we're fucking comics and he turned it into a fist fight, which that's my, that, that's what I don't like about it. Well, women could have made them, but they didn't. Yeah, because they're too busy. Yeah. Not because of, like, the patriarchy or anything, but because, like, they're too busy in the kitchen loving making sandwiches to me as my brawless wife. That's why. Um, but, no, it's just, it's, uh, yeah. No, the reason why I said that is because, like, if you even, uh, if you even support trans rights in any visible capacity on the internet, people will eat your ass in the fucking QRTs nonstop and tell you you're a cuck or a soy boy or whatever. Yeah. Uh, which is always really funny when they say that to me because I'm like, come on, dude. It sucks. I mean, what it, do you look like? <laughs> it, it really it really sucks because, you know, when you get that amount of hate, it does make you think twice as like a public figure, right? Like, I don't want people to hate on me. And then you have to go, hold on a second. This is like fucking gay rights in 1995, you know? Like, we need to fucking go to bat for this. Um, or... Like, you're going to be on the wrong side of history, you know? And so what I do appreciate is that years later, people still come up to me and say, hey, thank you for, like, going to bat in that interview. Uh, you did the best you could. I'm like, thank you. I'm glad that, you know, that that came through to some folks. Um, but I just always find it funny that Joe Rogan is a number one advocate. Uh, and I used to be a huge fan of his. Like, I've, I've watched him. I've hung out with him before as well, like, many, many years back. But I've watched him for many years. Uh, he has always been a gigantic advocate of gender-affirming surgery. Mm. Uh, as he is a like the number one, probably the most public, most vocal advocate of uh, of TRT, which is a form of uh, hormone therapy mm. that's gender affirming. He himself has taken t has done TRT throughout wow. the years, maybe even HGH, and yet he turns around and is like, "Yeah, trans women, you know, you can't you can't do that." I mean, it's the craziest thing is the reason we started talking about trans athletes was I brought up the case of Castor Semenya. Do you know Castor Semenya? Yes, the cis, uh, yeah. the, the cis woman who is, it was barred from competing because her testosterone levels were too high. Yeah, and like that's bullshit discrimination against a woman, against a black woman. She's like now barred from racing because the other racers said that it was unfair to compete against her. She's had no hormone replacement therapy of any kind. And Joe was like, yeah, that's bullshit. What do you think about trans athletes? And I was like... Well, I mean, for the same reason, like, I, I don't think they should be excluded from sports. And that set him off, uh, which is like, I don't understand how you are on the you can understand why to be on the right side of one and the wrong side of the other. Personally, apart from fucking prejudice. Like, yeah, no. What, what a, else is it? Like, it's, no, it's all people, an argument for prejudice. People that have natural people that have natural advantages like Michael Phelps or even like LeBron James. You know what I mean? Like people that have natural advantages beyond everything else is like. Uh, it, it's still, you know, that's fine. That's cool. That's actually celebrated. But, um, you know, anything else outside of that is unacceptable. Meaningful.